Hi there, this is David, and today we're going to be discussing emulation. Specifically, my history with it, and basically, how I came to know about it, how I feel about it, and how I got into it. My father brought home our first home computer whenever I was in 8th grade, so it must have been sometime in, like, 1995, and our family really didn't know what to make of it or even where to put it, so my mother just said to keep it in the basement. My father showed my brother and I how to use it, how to double-click, open windows, and all that jazz, but I wasn't all that interested in it, really. Every once in a while, my brother would go down there and fool around with it. I think that he was like trying to teach himself C++ or something, but other than playing Solitaire or Minesweeper, I really didn't care that the thing existed at all. I didn't even really know how to type, and I didn't see a reason to learn how to either. It really was just kind of a different time back then. I do remember when I had a report to do as kind of like an 8th grade term paper, it had to be typed, and presented in a clear plastic binder. So I wrote it up with a pen, and I handed it straight over to my brother for him to type up, because I really didn't want anything at all to do with the computer. That is, until we got America Online and the internet, probably sometime next year in about 1996, so we eventually moved the computer upstairs to the loft, where I still pretty much ignored it. Until one day I got the inspiration to look up and see if there are any websites about video games, and it was then that I discovered game FAQs. I had never heard of message boards before, so it was nice to chat and talk about games with like-minded people, but that wasn't the biggest deal for me. What I liked doing most was going down the list and looking at all the RPGs released for the NES and the SNES and thinking, what's that game? That wasn't released here. Then I would click on it and would look at the images and just wish that we got it. There were so many Japan-only games that it just blew my mind. I mean, I knew that Japan got more games than we did. Nintendo Power used to rub this in our faces all the time back then with their Only in Japan exclusive articles, which really just kind of started to piss me off. So I did all this back before Final Fantasy V was even translated, or that I even knew such a thing was possible. It was through the use of game FAQs that I really even realized that Final Fantasy 2, 3, and 5 existed at all. Not that I could play them or anything, though. I would spend hours just perusing the website and looking at cool, obscure JRPGs that I wished that I got the chance to play. But as far as I knew, there really was no way to. Those games were stuck in Japan, and translating a game was a pipe dream, and even so, how would I get a hold of them? Imports? Yeah, right. But then, my life changed when my brother read one magazine article. My mother liked to shop. So many times we'd spend our weekends at the mall, with my mother going to do her own thing in like Macy's, while my brother and I were left to our own devices to wander around for hours at a time. And we would pretty much look around at some of the stores, but invariably, we would end up at Walden Books, waiting for the appointed time to meet our mother for lunch and go home. So to pass all those times, I would read comic books like Calvin and Hobbes or Foxtrot, or go over to the strategy guide section and look at hints and tips for some of the games that I had. My brother, who was always into music, stuck to the magazines, and thank God he did. Because there was this article in Rolling Stone about something called emulation. It was a pretty small blurb, but it said that you could use computers to emulate consoles, but that you would need to download ROMs to do all this. He brought the magazine over to me, showed me the article, and we were both floored. I pulled out a pencil and paper and I wrote down emulation and ROMs on the paper because I knew that whenever I got home, I would have to look up those key words on AOL and get to the bottom of this. My older brother, being much more computer literate than I, downloaded Nesticle, which was an NES emulator, and my memory is a little bit cloudy, but I don't think that we were able to emulate SNES games until a few years later. Probably not until I was a senior in high school. But man, did I have a field day with Nesticle. Because by this time, my old NES that we got back in 1987 had quit working. And when you could actually get a game to work, the saves were always corrupted. So I hadn't played the Dragon Warrior or Final Fantasy games in like five years. So I downloaded those, as well as classics that I'd never beaten as a child, like Crystallis and Blaster Master. ROM sites were a bit weird back then. Nowadays, it's like a one-stop shop. But back then, you had to go to different ROM sites for different types of games. And downloading them sometimes took ages. But there was this one site. It was called the Cult of Kefka. 
and I remember using that exclusively to download all sorts of NES and SNES RPGs. And some of them, like Final Fantasy V, were even already translated. The NES ROMs were downloaded relatively fast, like in a half an hour or so, but downloading SNES ROMs was a whole different ballgame. Maybe it was just late 90s internet, or maybe because we lived in the back sticks of Georgia, but SNES ROMs took forever to download. We're talking something like three hours for just one ROM. But I came up with a little time-saving trick. I would start up four downloads at one time right before bed, and they would download all through the night, and by morning, maybe one of them would be done, and the other three would probably be finished by the time that I was home from school that afternoon. The young kids out there might think that I'm kidding, but as anybody who lived through this knows, some files could literally take days. Now, playing on the emulator was different too, because you had to play on the computer keyboard. USB controllers weren't really a thing, or if they were, I didn't know that they existed. So while I wanted to play a wider variety of games, such as Secret of Mana, King of Dragons, or Kirby Superstar, that was kind of difficult on the keyboard. But traditional turn-based RPGs didn't require any precision controls, so I stuck to them. They were my favorite genre anyway. And honestly, looking back on this time, it's really whenever I moved away from Nintendo and Mario, and I switched over to Sony, and I just began strictly buying only RPGs, and all the other genres just fell to the wayside. Today it's kind of crazy to look back and see just how far the internet and emulation has come, and I know that some purists out there will hate me for this, but I love emulation. If I have a choice of playing on a console or using an emulator, I will choose emulation every single time. It's just so much easier for me to play on a computer. I don't have to fiddle around with finicky consoles that may or may not work, and they have quality of life upgrades like save states and fast forward, which makes older, slower games so much more playable to me. I guess that I just don't really have the patience that I used to. Well, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this walk down memory lane with me as I spoke about my experience with emulation and really just the early years of the internet. What are your experiences and memories of this time? I would love to hear them. And if you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link to it can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day. Hi guys, David here, and I um, hope that you guys enjoyed the video, and I just wanted to share with you a little another story about how I even came about creating this video. At first, I wasn't going to talk about computers or emulation or anything like that. I was actually trying to make a video about Legend of Lagaya. Um, one of my favorites. And as I sat down at the computer and I started typing, um, I started talking about Legend of Lagaya, and then I said, you know, I said, you know, a game like this wouldn't have come out unless a game like Final Fantasy VII opened up the floodgates for it. So then I started talking about Final Fantasy VII. But then as I started talking about that, like, I really just went off on a tangent about how there were games on the SNES and NES that were released in Japan but didn't come here, and it took a game like Final Fantasy VII in order to make a game like Legend of Lagaya get released in the West. So um, I just wanted to basically like share a little bit of background of how I came about thinking about emulation and creating this video because it's just kind of weird how it came about. It came about with me wanting to talk about Legend of Gaia, and then I went and I wrote this whole thing, and I ended up deleting it. And then I wrote this whole thing about, well, maybe I'll instead talk about Final Fantasy VII and how that opened up the floodgates. And I wrote another paragraph or so, and then I deleted it because I ended up being like, you know what, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about emulation. I want to talk about these games that that, that were out there these games that were out there for the Japanese audience, but we didn't get. So I ended up focusing instead on emulation. And I just wanted to share with you how, how something like you might think, oh, I just want to talk about Legend of Lagaya, and how that could change into something else that, that, that I really want to talk about. So I hope again that you guys enjoyed the video. It was a little bit personal for me. I normally don't go in and share personal stories like that, but I did hope that you guys enjoy it. Have a good one.